All right, it's Python on hardware time. This week, I'm gonna do a quick overview of the newsletter. You gotta sign up. We don't spam, it's a separate website. It never touches your customer account. It's adafruitdaily.com. Has nothing to do with your store experience. We just went crazy over the top just to prove we would never do anything like that, and never will. So please subscribe because we like to make sure people are reading. So we have about like, I don't know, 89,000 people. We'd like to hit the 10K mark. So please uh, subscribe. And if you like Python on hardware, it's the only newsletter. So it's like, you know, this is the one, this is the one to do it. Um, so PyLadies has a talk on basic hardware with Circuit Python. That's from the Southwest Florida PyLadies group. We just wrapped up a bunch of Halloween stuff. You can also see all the costumes from uh, the folks at Adafruit. Melbourne, Melbourne MicroPython Meetup is back. This one is, these are always really good. There's yeah, presentations there's tons in these slides. of good stuff in these slides. Yeah, this is, this is really good. Um, there's a Humble Bundle book bundle for Raspberry Pi. If you want to get spun up in a lot of stuff, there's a Scott show. You saw that. Um, there's a ton of Halloween themed spooky, circuit spooky, spooky, Python spooky. projects. So this is a talking clock with a Pico. This is a tombstone. All of these things are powered by circuit Eyeballs. Python. We made it really easy to just come up with an idea and uh, the code and, and doing it doesn't get in your way. Um, so lots of stuff, but this is what I wanted to, uh, oh, here's another cool thing. Um, what I wanted to, to show this week is uh, one, we got to some nice kudos, and then two, I wanted to show specifically this uh, very cool thing that Scott's working on. So first up, um, sometimes people in the community say stuff better than you can. Um, so Adafruit published embedded, oh sorry, Adafruit pushed embedded development to completely another level, I'll just paraphrase. I plug device in, change code, and see the result or many error messages after a second. So that's the very big difference. I think like when you look at dev boards in the past and then Arduino, and then you look at where CircuitPython is right now, you instantly get feedback on what you're doing. You instantly know what's going on and you never have to compile and wait, compile and wait. And you're not yeah. stuck with some weird cloud thing either. And so for embedded development, um, we, I think we're, we're, we're cutting down the time to almost zero for experts, and then for yeah. beginners, they can get started in five minutes. Yeah, I mean, it's it's about just making the iteration loop so fast. I mean, when I test hardware now, I'd like to test it with CircuitPython because it's so fast, there's no compile and upload time, and chips are getting so large now that it can take like half a second, yeah. half a minute, or a minute to recompile and upload code for like testing each pin or testing each peripheral. Um, whereas with, with embedded Python, it's instant. And you know when things fail, you get an error message telling you why you don't just it just doesn't just hang yeah. or say like okay you know this thing returned null I don't know why you get like detailed information I think um, I think that's really important and I think it's it's going to take a while for everybody to catch up with that but I I personally think you know as projects get more and more complicated um, having it be embedded Python is is key and I think you know what's interesting is you know RP twenty forty when we saw that launch. And it launched with MicroPython and CircuitPython as like primary support. That's what people use. It's whatever whatever the chip maker supplies example code for, people will actually yeah. kind of they'll head towards that. Yeah. And I one thing, I see a lot of people trying to help kids with robotics. I think it's a form of torture if you have to compile over and over and over when you're trying to do robotics. Because you have to wait and you're like, let me move to servo. Eh. Oh, wow, it didn't work. Let me compile again. And all of a sudden, it's an hour just to get one thing going. Yeah, I, I tell people, like, the first time I learned how to program, you was using this programming language called Adventure Game Toolkit. I remember the thing that was the most challenging for me is having used a Mac, I didn't understand that you wrote code in a text file and then applied a compiler to it. I kept double-clicking the compiler and being like, well, why... You know why? I didn't realize you had to like drag the file or open it from within, and it was not in. It wasn't edited within the program. Um, I just didn't understand how compilers worked, and so I'm I'm still at this point in my life allergic to compilers. Okay. Um, so with that speed and all those things we can do, um, one of the neat things I, I put this on Twitter. I'm like, can you guess what this is? And some people are like, ooh, that's like a black and white screen. There's a little blinker thing, and it's like then I showed another photo. It's like, ooh, that's interesting. And so what is it? yeah, so that's a Raspberry Pi, and it's yeah. an e-ink display. But it's an HDMI e-ink display, and uh, Scott got some Circuit Python bare metal stuff working, and I'm just like, I have a weird screen. I have to like plug it into this because I want to make an e-ink Haiku computer one day. Blah 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 blah. Um, so here, take it away, uh, us when we film this. Okay, lady. Uh, what we have here is a Raspberry Pi, 
and it's running CircuitPython on bare metal, as I say in the biz. And the cool thing about that is you can display things on HDMI screens, but that wasn't good enough for us. We wanted to see if it worked on an e-ink HDMI display, so Lady Ada, take it away. Yeah, so this is um, CircuitPython running native on uh, the BCM2840. 45, I don't remember the part number. Um, and uh, what's cool is the uh, the frame buffer is actually really easy to write to, apparently. So um, there's two interesting things. One, we connect to the REPL over the USB. So this is actually running in, like, USB peripheral mode. And that's where you get to the REPL. And then HDMI out is shown here. And as I uh, type things yes. into the REPL, it will yeah, refresh and appear. Super freaky. So uh, GPIO is coming next. So far, so good. All right. And that's Python on Hardware News this week. Yay, Blinka. A lot of cool stuff. I'm, I'm digging the slow but steady progress with the bare, bare metal Raspberry Pi. Yeah. Um, and, you know, Interpreter. I think, I mean, it's like, it's a kind of a ridiculous project, but it's also kind of a, you know... Oh, no, this is going to be one of those weird sleeper hits that we have no idea what people are going to do with it. Yeah. So the fact that... Like, you can get a $5 Raspberry Pi Zero 2W. Um, I have this little portable projector. Um, the idea that, especially a young person, could just, like, start typing in things and learning the code and then make art that's, like, yeah. that's broadcast, uh, that's uh, projected, or you can use an ink display. I want to make a haiku thing where you, like, you learn how to make haikus and then you take the ink display and you just put it on the refrigerator. Stuff like that.